Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Living Coast in your living room. My name is Ashley, one of the educators here at the Living Coast Discovery Center. Now, the Living Coast Discovery Center is a small nonprofit zoo and aquarium located down in Chula Vista on the San Diego Bay National Wildlife Refuge. During this time, we are doing our best to bring you educational videos to learn about nature and all of the wonderful things within it at your own home. Now, right now we are filming our videos on Facebook Live, but starting next week, we are moving exclusively to broadcasting our videos on YouTube. So be sure to follow us along with that journey, moving to our YouTube playlist. You can follow the link below to be able to access that and still be able to see all of our wonderful activities and coloring sheets on our website. Now today, we are actually going to be focusing all about shorebirds. We are at our shorebird aviary that is home to nine different species of shorebirds. Now first we're going to talk a little bit about what a shorebird is and then I'm actually going to get a chance to feed our shorebirds so that you can hopefully get a nice up close view of what our shorebirds look like. So first things first, what is a shorebird? Do you know what a shorebird is? What makes a shorebird different from any other type of bird? Shorebirds are a diverse group of birds that generally are going to be found feeding and gathering on the shorelines of beaches, mudflats, and other wetland habitats. Shorebirds are generally going to be characterized as wading birds, so birds that are going to wade through shallow waters to find their food. But many people and scientists use the term shorebird to include pretty much any bird that is going to be found around water, such as gulls and terns. Generally, a shorebird is going to have long legs to walk through the water in the mud without getting stuck or getting wet. And they generally also have a longer beak to be able to find food in that waterline. Now there are many different types of shorebirds, including things like plovers, gulls, oyster catchers, avocets, stilts, and sandpipers. And there's so many more other than those that I just named. So that's just a very short list of some of the ones that I've named that you can often find here at the Living Coast Discovery Center out on the refuge. But there are so many more and there's so many more within this category. Mostly all of those shorebirds are gonna have those longer legs. They're gonna have those longer bills and they even have long toes. So even longer toes to help display their weight out so they're not getting stuck on that mud. All of these adaptations help them to be able to successfully forage within that wet, muddy habitat of shorelines. And they can also eat a large diet of all kinds of different things, including things like insects, mollusks, which are gonna be things like snails. They can eat crustaceans, so different types of crabs, and any other invertebrate as well. So things like krill, sea stars, or even isopods. So let's see if we can get an up close look and check out some of our shorebird friends. Now throughout the video, you might have been able to see our ring-billed gulls actually swimming around. So we have two ring-billed gulls that call the Living Coast home. And these two are actually named Salt and Pepper. All right, let's see if I can get them to come a little closer. I'm going to be feeding them a little bit of stuff out into the water. So at first they're going to be a little confused and be like, what's coming in over here? And then they'll actually come check it out and investigate to see what it is is coming into their environment. So these are the ring-billed gulls, and they are going to be one of the smaller types of white gulls that you can find here in San Diego. Now you might also get a chance to hear them as they often make a lot of noises out here. So, oh. and now it looks like Rudy, our ruddy duck, is coming on over. So we'll touch back with our girlfriends later and let's talk about Rudy. Do you see Rudy there? Rudy's coming over to investigate what it is I've been gently throwing into the water here for him. Now, Rudy is a ruddy duck. Now, ruddy ducks are going to be beautiful in coloration. So you see he's got these lovely reddish colored feathers to give off that auburn hint and can you see what color his beak is yeah so if you get a nice close look as rudy is doing a great job of coming on over to us rudy has a blue beak now this blue beak is actually only going to be here seasonally with him as he is a ruddy duck and ruddy ducks 
seasonally change their beak color. Now, so throughout the year when it's not breeding season, their beak is actually going to be a brownish gray color. And then during the mating season, they actually change their beak color, it turns blue. And this is actually so that they can successfully find mates. So that blue coloration helps to attract mates. Of course, every time I put the camera on him, he swims away and goes to a different spot. <laughs> Now, ready ducks are not very big ducks. They are pretty small and stock in body shape. There he is, nice and close to you guys. And they'll actually change colors. So right now he is that lovely brownish red coloration, but the rest of the year, he's actually more just traditional brownish gray. <laughs> All right, so that's Rudy, our ready duck and if you would like, you can color our pictures of our coloring sheets. We have one exclusively on Rudy the Ready Duck. But let's see if we can get a chance to check out our seagull friends again. So the ring goals over here. So you can see we have one over there on the shoreline hanging out. I'll see if I can throw her a worm and see if she's going to want that. So we do have two of those ring build goals. Here comes another one. And they do fly a lot. So we are inside of our shorebird aviary. And our shorebird aviary is home to a variety of different birds. And they can actually fly. So these birds that are in here are able to fly around. There he goes. Now he's coming over to check out those worms. So Nikita asks, why is it called a ruddy duck? And that's a great question. I have no idea but Ruddy Duck is the name of this type of duck species. We just named him Rudy because we think it's funny that he's Rudy the Ruddy Duck. All right, so I'm gonna see if we can check out our friend Magic. He's one of our black neck stilts. So he likes to hide over on the other side. So we'll see if he wants to come and be our friend today and check him out. Make sure I give these guys a little bit more so we get a chance to see Rudy again. Oh, nice. Now I know, next time I can tell everybody the answer, Nikita, that ruddy is another word for red. Now do you guys see that other bird way back there? That is actually our white-faced ibis. So that white-faced ibis is going to be another bird that lives here in our shorebird aviary. And you can see it has that characteristic long beak and long legs. Let me see if I can zoom in on him a little bit. Of course I do, and he went behind the pole. <laughs> you know, working with the animals, you never know what they're going to do. But you can get a chance to see those long legs and those long toes. So ibises are a perfect example of how shorebirds are adapted to life on that shoreline. All right, so let's see. I'm going to give these guys a little bit more, and then we're going to go see what we can find out with our friend Magic. He's our black neck stilt. He's one of my favorite shorebirds that we have out here. All right, let's see. Magic, there he is. All right, give me one moment, and we'll walk around to go find him. Magic is a black neck stilt, and he is very pretty, so I like to highlight him. So stilts are getting their name stilt because they have those really long legs and they look like they're walking on stilts. And you can see with Magic here, he also has that really long and sharp beak. And this really long beak helps him to be able to probe through the mud and find any of the food sources that he might be looking for. So you can see Magic here is actually trying to eat that worm I just threw him. There he goes. Now, I'm not sure if you can tell, but if you look closely here, Magic is actually missing an eye. So that is one of the reasons why Magic lives here with us. So he unfortunately has suffered an eye injury. And because of this eye injury, he is no longer able to survive on his own. All right, let's see if I can set the camera down for you guys so you get a nice view of magic. All right. 
right, so a little bit about black neck stilts. They are going to have that black coloration on their body. So you can see on their backside, their neck and their head, they have those black feathers. And then they have a white throat with the white underside. They have those super long beaks that they use to help reach into the water to find any of the food sources that might be hiding in the mud. Things like worms or different snails and crabs. Smaller things though, because you can see that bill is pretty thin. So they're not gonna be able to eat things that are super large in size. So Sarah asks, why is magic all black on top, but white on the bottom? And that's a great question, Sarah. And that is actually called a type of camouflage and it's called counter shading. These two different coloration patterns help them to be able to survive by hiding in plain sight. So if magic was walking around in some dark mud areas, that darker coloration helps him blend in with what's underneath him. And something looking up at him, that white coloration helps him blend in with anything that might be looking up at him. All right, let's give Magic one more little worm here. Magic's favorite thing to snack on here at the Living Coast is going to be these worms. Now we do also have a coloring sheet on Magic as well. So if you would like to check that one out, you can color that one. And any of our coloring sheets that you decide to color, be sure to comment those in our Facebook videos as we love to see all the great work that you guys are doing out there. Now, although these birds here at the Living Coast are here because they're unable to survive on their own, doesn't mean that there aren't things we can do to help protect birds out in the wild. Now, there are many different issues that shorebirds face and some of their biggest threats are actually going to be human impacts such as pollution entering their waterways. As these birds often specialize in eating some of those smaller animals, things that end up in the water, those pollutants and those toxins, they actually get absorbed into the plankton. Then that plankton gets eaten by something bigger like a small worm or a small snail. And as it goes up that food chain like that, the birds are the ones that suffer because they are actually taking in that toxin. And there's going to be more and more of that toxin as it moves up the food chain. This process is called bioaccumulation. And when it gets stronger, that's called biomagnification. So as that <laughs> toxin or um, pollution increases, it becomes more and more toxic, which can be very detrimental to these birds and any larger. Do you see it, Magic? He's right here. Let me remove this guy. Here you go, buddy. All right. All right, so let's go check back in with our other friends on the other side and see how they're doing over here. All right. So as I was saying, as these different things end up in the water columns, it can cause problems for these birds. Their biggest issues are pollution moving up in that food chain through bioaccumulation and biomagnification. So some really easy things that you can do is just make sure whenever you're going outside, you are cleaning up your, after yourself. And you guys know how storm drains are labeled. Drain leads to the ocean, no dumping. That is actually true. And that is gonna be the best thing that you can do is make sure that you are not getting anything into the storm drain areas in your neighborhood. And this will actually help all kinds of different shorebirds and many other animals too. So now I'm giving our girlfriends friends some of those worms so they're gonna get a little vocal. <laughs> You guys can hear it does get pretty noisy over here in the shorebird aviary uh, let's give you a nice good view of everything that's going on here and if you have any questions let us know we'd be happy to answer those for you to the best of our ability and we even love those questions when we don't know the answers because then that means we get to go do more research and learn a little bit more so feel free to ask any questions you might have see if i can get that all the way over there to my ibis friend oh i did do you see how the ibis walked away all right, well, thank you for joining us here today on Living Coast in Your Living Room. And we'll see you next time. Be sure to join us as we switch over to YouTube. Don't forget, same time, same, well, not really same place, but same time, Monday to Friday at 11 a.m. You are right. That is the Ridgeway Rails noises that you just heard. Good job. 
All right, guys, have a great day.